Is it, it? Yeah, no, you're good. Yeah. How's the weather there? Um, today, actually, it's, it's really quite nice. I didn't have to wear a coat at all. It's about 55 degrees, and we're melting some of this 12-foot snow, so it's nice. Uh, that's great. Yeah. Unlike here, if it's 55 degrees, I'm like, grab a coat. I know, I know. I know, but it's better than two degrees, so we're loving it. That's, that's right. Okay, so first off, let's just start with all the business. Sure. Tell me, give me your name and business and how long you've been in. Tell me a little bit about your company. Absolutely. It's Creative Wall Coverings and Interiors. We also go by CWI or CWI. We have a few different aliases that we like to use. My mom started the business over 40 years ago. Um, so we've been in different locations, and now we're at 560 Central Avenue in New Providence. Um, we've been here for about two years, and we love our new space. This is our new home, and we plan to stay. Um, we, well, I was working with my mom as an apprentice for a few years. Then we, I became her partner, um, and then I took over on my own about 15 years ago. Um, so I've been in the business all my life, grew up with it. Um, obviously, you know, through uh, junior high and high school and, you know, helped out, but really didn't know what I wanted to do um, in my future career other than I know I loved textiles, I loved clothing, I loved anything that had to do with color and fashion, and that was my passion. So I really went to school for an all-around arts degree, um, decided that I wanted to pursue the fashion a little bit more. I ran some clothing stores for U.S. Shoe, and um, my mother's partner started to leave, so I decided that I would try it. She asked me, and I gave my resignation. The day I walked in, that was it. Uh, I knew this was for me. Everything worked out perfectly, and I've been able to grow it uh, from where we were before to where we are now, which is um, sales of over $3.7 million uh, and growing. Last year we were even higher, so it's uh, on the upswing again. And so we, I really enjoy it. I have uh, several designers that work for me. Um, we all have a great family, great staff here, and uh, we, I put a lot of heart and soul into this business. That sounds fantastic. Now tell me, the only thing I missed is, hi, I'm Rachel Kapner, and my company is blank. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm Rachel Kapner. I'm 43 years old, um, creative wall coverings and interiors. Um, at 560 Central Avenue, New Providence, New Jersey. Now, do one more thing for me. Sure. Um, do you look 43? No, everyone says that I look like I'm 32, 33. Perfect. So do I. <laughs> so what I want you to do is do it again. You okay. need the address. Just, hi, I'm Rachel, and big, hi, I'm Rachel Kavner, and then your company, because it's the first thing at the top of your tape. Okay. Hi, I'm Rachel. Okay. All right, we ready? Yes. Okay. Give it a gap so you can cut it into a Okay. Don't run things down. Okay, no problem. Hi, I'm Rachel Kapner, Creative Wall Coverings and Interiors. I'm 43 years old. Yeah, without 43. Okay. Hi, I'm Rachel Kapner, Creative Wall Coverings and Interiors. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, because you know what? I, I never, 43 is, is, is not old, even for us casting for the show. But you know what? If I can play you in your 30s and you're a younger person, somebody who actually is maybe 50 and looks 40, then I can get by with it. Sure. So, you know everybody wants somebody young. <laughs> but in our case, we are really looking for great designers. And, you know, I really don't think that you can really have your design style and really down until you're in your late 30s, 40s. Yes. You know. And my style has evolved as well. So it's, you know, really uh, come from starting... <laughs> about your style and how it's evolved. Sure. I originally, I would say my style originally was more French, a mix, mixture of using antiques and very traditional types of feel, lots of color. Um, but I have definitely transitioned into something where I like to mix antiques with new pieces, clean lines, still using a lot of color. I'm definitely known for my usage of color, um, my sense of color. Um, and I would say that has really evolved into slightly, I, I t tend to uh, think of myself as someone who can work with all different types of designs, so I don't like to be uh, known as a designer who only does X. Um, I think I can do everything from A to Z and um, really enjoy working on all different looks because it also helps to open my eyes to different designs. It helps me to be um, sort of motivated or to initiate a new look that I might not have used. Um, but I would say overall it's definitely a transitional feel with 
very much touches of uh, classic traditional. Well, tell me a little bit about where, where have you gone outside your comfort zone um, as, far as, uh, as far as your decorating goes? If somebody said, you know, I want you, I want to decorate really modern, very contemporary. Talk to me about the, the time, the job where it was like, it was a little outside my comfort zone, but I really grew or however that worked out. Uh, well, one that definitely comes to mind is someone who really wanted just a totally monochromatic look. Everything from just every shade of white, ivory, cream, where I'm used to doing lots of color and I enjoy color. Um, but learning how you know, she enjoyed the absence of color and how it really made her feel that her palette was very clean and fresh and open, um, it, it helped me to see the beauty of doing more monochromatic feels. We added touches of color in the pillows, but overall the walls and all the uh, fabrics and textiles were a use of just ivories and creams, and it was stunning. And it really made her happy, which made me happy, um, you know, because I really try and incorporate my clients' tastes, feelings into the project in order to make it their home. Now, if you will, just give me a couple lines at the top of that, which is because I cut this thing down to about two minutes. So give me a couple of lines at the top of it was, you know, one of a time that I had a real challenge was when a client wanted me to blank. Okay. Uh, let me think for a second. One, one, one challenge, I would say, when I stepped a little outside my comfort zone was, Mm -hmm. Gives me uh, open to this little story. That's interesting because, honestly, I I come up against lots of challenges. Um, I apologize about the phone. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, I come up against a lot of challenges, but I don't see them that way. And I honestly, I can't think of one that really pushed me to say, "Oh my gosh, I don't think I can do this." I always come up with no, no, something. I don't want you to say, "I don't think I can do this." Just say. You know, it pushed me outside of what my norm is. Right, right. That's all. Okay. Um. I'm not looking for, oh, I couldn't do it. I, what I'm looking for is, is just a little bit of, because with all television, as you know, um, what happens is, is, you know, you want to see somebody is like, oh, this one was something that was outside my comfort zone, but I persevered and I succeeded and it was lovely and it opened my eyes to blank. Okay. So I have that story, but I want to be open to it, which is, um, I, you know, uh, you know, I like to use a lot of color and one time a client wanted me to do all monochromatic, it was a little outside my comfort zone. Okay. I think I'll use that example then. Perfect. Uh, so can you repeat the start again so that I can, uh... Absolutely mirror me, because let me tell you, this is what we do in the show. Everybody says great stuff, but we have to condense it to get it to where we need it. Uh -huh. What sounds good for, because I, I can cut this in my head as I'm talking to you. And, um, so yeah, what I want you to say is, you know what, I, de I love color. I decorate in color. And I, you know, I ran across, like, I had a client that really wanted me to do all monochromatic. It was a little outside my comfort zone. I was working with a client who wanted just very, very monochromatic, all creams and whites. I enjoy color personally. I love color. I have color in my office, my home, everywhere I can put color. So it was a little outside my comfort zone, but I really enjoyed learning and bringing out in myself that I can layer in so many different things. It showed me the absence of color actually lends the beauty to the artwork that was in the room. Now, that's what I call a perfect bite. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That was great. Okay. Talk to me a little bit about your mentors. I think, I love the story of your, I'm assuming that your mother is a big mentor or what? She is, and she still, she still works with us when she comes back from her home in Florida. She works two days a week. Um, she helps myself as well as my other designers and the rest of the team. Now, let's start over. Okay. Say, I would say that my biggest mentor has been... Okay. Go into your mom. Absolutely. I would say my biggest mentor has been my mother. She started the business and taught me everything that I know. I apprenticed under her for many years and really enjoyed uh, learning the business and applying it to my clients and to my style. 
Uh, secondly, I would say probably Mario Bawada, which has been in a lot of my bios because I love his use of uh, pattern, color, mixture of the such, and also just mixing in playfulness along with elegance. Oh, wonderful. Um, I'm going to also ask you some personal. Talk to me a little bit about, do you, use, do you ever use Maya Romanoff? I do. We have actually, we do have a lot of her samples in my showroom. They're very interesting. They really, um, it's almost like artwork for the walls. We're getting ready to, we're redoing my guest, our guest house. Mm hmm doing a whole nook and that's like a little going to be a little jewel box. Yeah, beautiful. In my Romanoff tile. Nice. Yeah, that those are fit. A little bit about things like that, like how you really, I only reason I asked that is since you said, what is it, that your creative wall coverings, I'm like, she's got to be doing my Romanoff somewhere in there. Yes. Talk to me a little bit about things like that. Like, you know, everybody thinks about walls as paint or wallpaper, but what's so great is, and then talk to me a little bit about, you know, incorporate all these great wall coverings you can do. Absolutely. And there are so many different wall techniques, whether it is wall covering, fabric that's been fabric back that we can apply to the wall, upholstering the walls. Um, a lot of people also disregard the ceilings. Um, we try and use the ceilings as walls, and we've done a lot through our show houses where I've applied cork wall coverings to the ceiling to almost give it like a glistening look. It really um, emphasizes that, pops out the molding, and becomes a, another portion of the whole entire design. Well, you know, as a matter of fact, we're going to be putting bamboo on our ceiling. There you so go. I'm following. We have the same. We, I have a little design background myself, and we have the same thought process. That's great. All right, great. Okay, so give me, again, one of the things that I like to do with, uh, with all these pieces is lead in. Okay. And, um, and oh, a lead in is just a couple of sentences that gets me to, you know, the story. So... You know, one of the biggest things that I, or one of the, the things that I like to do the most, you know, because you, wall co is wall coverings. I really think that that's a palette, that they, um, you know, that's where you start, that's the canvas, we create the blank. Talk me about what wall coverings are to you. It gives me an open to that, to that story. Uh, wall coverings can really become a statement, even if they're more of a subtle design, as well as a bold uh, floral pattern. It really can start the room. It A, starts the color. It's most likely going to have some kind of dimension and or pattern. Um, it really will start the layering process. That's the first thing that gets applied. And then, of course, anything that goes over it, window treatments, artwork, accessories, but that becomes the backdrop for the rest of the room. Fantastic. I love it. Okay. I'm not even looking at Patty's questions. I'm just talking to you. Okay. I love Design. Talk to me about your design aesthetic. If I had to give myself, like for instance, at the top of our show, um, we now they're coming with blowers. So I'm going to go lock myself in a girl's room. Um, if you were talking about um, your, like if we we say so and so is French country, so and so is blank, because we'll have two designers in the show that have very different aesthetics. Okay. Okay. Give it a thought and tell me how you would, would most um, describe your design aesthetic. I would describe my design aesthetic as a very transitional look. Clean lines, classic pieces, but tending a little bit more towards a transitional feel. Not a contemporary or modern feel, but it's almost, almost bridging between the two. My design aesthetic, I would say, definitely has evolved from traditional almost really into a transitional feel. It mixes clean lines, newer, newer edges. You can start over because you said transitional and you meant to say something else. Okay. Like I said, this, this is probably a different interview than Patty's, and the reason being is that I'm cutting it. Okay. I can hear 
hear it, so I want to. My job is, and our job is, is to learn about you, but it's also, Patty kind of already learned about you, uh -huh. so we love you. Our job is to make you the best so that we can put you on the show. Okay. So, and that, that, that's what my job is, 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 uh, is in this stage. No problem. Creating the whole show, is Okay. So tell me again, talk to me about my design aesthetic has evolved. My design aesthetic has evolved from a very traditional country French feel into very transitional. I enjoy using clean lines, slightly modern effects, but very classic feels. Fantastic. Um, do you consider yourself to have an area of expertise? Like I am, and I, I'm guessing it would be wall coverings since that's one of the things in your, uh, that's, Gino, stop it. Dog has followed me in here, now rolling around. That's okay. Okay, so tell me about, like, what's your area of expertise? Uh, it's, it's, interestingly, my area of expertise, though, is almost, you know, well-rounded in different things. I would say a lot of people know me for color. My, my eye for color, uh, my color applications, my layering of colors. Uh, not necessarily wall coverings. We started the business as wall coverings, but it really has evolved into all facets of interior design. So I would say a lot of people, um, feedback that I've had from my clients, I am the woman for color. Oh, got it. That's fantastic. Um, have you ever been a TV a designer on TV? Have you ever done any television? No. Okay, that doesn't matter. Um, how well do you know the local area for sourcing? I don't, I don't really care about that. Um, what are your, some of your pet peeves on a work site? Like, I can't stand it when people show up late. I can't stand it if blank. Like, what are some of on a work site when you're dealing with folks? How, and this is where we want to get, I'd say a little bit petty. Uh-huh. Not trying to look fantastic. Like, oh, I get along with everybody and every life is fantastic all the time. <laughs> what I want to hear is what are your, some of your pet peeves when you're working on a project? Uh, it's some of my pet peeves when working on a project can be even just if I'm supposed to be there at 11 I'm there at 11 and if I'm waiting for someone for a half an hour that's really gonna put a kink in my schedule so like, you know what tell me it's like you know what I can't stand when people aren't on time okay at a work site, doesn't that happen a lot it does <laughs> talk to me about it uh, I can't stand when I am on a work site I am Really pressed for time. I have a very tight schedule. Start over without the phone. Okay. And go. One of my pet peeves is when I'm on a project and I have a really tight schedule and I just am waiting for people to show up. I just, I don't have time for that. Got it. Um, do you consider yourself competitive? Uh, I, I'm competitive within myself. I really like to try and push myself and be driven within myself to learn and to be better every time I do something. Um, so I really try and strive within myself. Got it. And talk to me about, like you mentioned show homes. And show homes are competitive. They are. Anybody's going to say, you want, you want the people walking out of there to be like, that master bedroom, bathroom, bedroom was the best thing in that whole house. You know, when you've got a show home and you're only one room of that house, I know how competitive that can be. Yes. Um, so talk to me about a little bit about competing in, a, in design. Um, I actually, uh, our firm was asked to be in a show house uh, five years ago. There's one every two years. That was the first show house locally that we had done um, other than house tours. And we won Best in Show. We won the Tulip Award for a nursery that we did. Um, so that was very exciting being that it was our first time in and everyone was very upset who had been returning uh, designers and had other rooms throughout the house. Ours was on the third floor and it just turned out so fantastic and we won. Fantastic. And how is that with competition if somebody is super ultra competitive and is just like you know how does that make you feel how uh, do you deal with competition from others 
Well, I definitely, we ran into that in almost all of our show houses. Um, we did a show house where our room was finished first um, pr prior to anybody else's, so we were able to have it photographed and put into a magazine. Um, so a lot of jealousy every time I'd walk into the room, you know, prior to the show house opening, everyone was like, oh, Rachel's room was done first. Uh, but that's how we are. I like to get it done. I like to have it done prior to everyone else. I like to be have every detail taken care of. And when I come up against that, I really try and say, you know, I have a team behind me that will get me there, that I know we can all work together, and I'm just going to come out ahead. Got it. And talk to me um, a little bit. How are you, how are you at decorating um, a room to look like a million dollars on a thousand dollar budget? Or is it not the idea that you get the idea? I do. I do. How, do you, how, how is it when you work with a budget? Uh, actually, but budgets are actually very good because there's a lot of uh, materials and types of furniture that really can look like a million bucks that are, are not the price tag. Um, I would say even over the past two years, I've totally seen many, many vendors come out with secondary gr lines, groups of furniture, uh, fabric lines that have the same look as a price point that would be much, much higher. So it actually helps to be able to have uh, a room look like million bucks for really small budget. Got it. And, um, and, and talk to me, do you ever have to like, you know, go outside, like do you ever do any, because um, I know you mentioned a couple of antiques, do you ever flea market, do you ever do, what do you do to kind of, besides just secondary lines, do you ever do, ha, ha, do you ever pick up extra pieces oh, sure. out of the ordinary? Yep. Um, Many clients like to have the rooms finished down to the very last detail. So it would mean either going to antique stores, picking up things from other uh, vendors or different uh, accessory stores where I might have a relationship with other uh, places that I can borrow things. But you really want to be able to uh, finish a room down to every last detail. So sometimes I'll be out and I'll see something and I'll just pick it up because I know my client, you know, if it's made for the right spot, they'll love it. Um, I, on short time and, and lower budget, it definitely, you know, has its challenges, but you sit down, you map it out, you figure out what will fit within that and what vendors would be able to come through for you. Um, uh, having relationships with a lot of the vendors for over 40 years, it's, if it's something that I need to get done, it'll get done. And, and what, it, what, how is it, how do you work under, and I already know this answer, but I get it a bunch of different ways, but how are you under stressful conditions? Uh, I keep it. So it's not going to be the stress that I'm making it sound like, but, but on the on the show it will. Obviously, we cut television. Right. Before. Right. Woo, it was crazy and all, but but it can be. If you manage it correctly. You've got seven weeks to make it all happen, then eight to put it in. Correct. So yes. I consider that a, a tight budget or tight time frame. But yep. And usually, even with show houses, um, you only have one day for install. So you've you've had other. Uh, craftsmen through, but you have to make sure that logistically everybody is on the same page, everyone is done with their work, so that you can come in and do the finishing touches. Um, so as long as you everything is managed well, it's, it's not a problem. Under pressure, I would say what I try and do is really just go back, look at what needs to get done, keep it internally, uh, try not to, you know, have every, I try not to crack under pressure or show under pressure, but you know internally it's there, and I just work with it and and be able to get what I need to get done. And talk to me about physical labor. Like, do you ever have to? Have you ever had to? Besides moving furniture around, have you ever? Have you ever? Uh, you know, had to, like, do you ever pitch in and help paint or help whatever? Like, talk to me about things you know to get a project done sometimes you have to absolutely I am totally I would consider myself a hands-on designer I am the type that will deliver furniture at midnight I ha can have something flown up on continental if it's missing and needs to get there um, I would do anything I re and I do I am the type of person that would go out at 11.30 at night, try and find a place that was open if I needed to get anything. Go to Home Depot 24 hours a day. I mean, that's just how driven and dedicated that I am, and I know that I want to get it done and right for my client, and that's what's the satisfying part is knowing that they are happy and that I got it done. Okay, I, I've got almost everything I need. I want to ask you, is there anything that you want to tell me um, about you or 
about your company that, that, you know, that I haven't asked you? Uh, I would say, you know, just knowing that, knowing the staff that I have and all the support and the management that I, you know, have around me, that this project would be something